Hey, what's going on guys? Heads here from Infinity Loops and welcome back. Today, you are gonna learn how to build the Mob Thick V3. Yeah. That's enough of the epic mashups. Let's learn how to build this thing. Let's start with some tools you might want to set aside. Wire clippers, some needle nose pliers. Those help you pull these little TPU bits through. A Phillips head screwdriver you would normally use for your motors. And then one that is slightly larger, you're going to want to use that for the flight controller screws. They are a bit bigger uh, and you don't want to strip them out by using a small one. You're also going to need a nice set of tweezers, some solder, a little bit of flux. I use blue tack to hold down my parts as I solder them instead of using uh, the helping hands little pinchy things. Now on to the parts you're going to need to build this, a Fractal 75 by Fractal Engineering. The flight controller, which is a Crazy Bee Express LRS from Happy Model. Next up is the camera, which I could not get a new one here in time, but a uh, Foxier Pico Razor is the camera that I use. And if you get one of these brand new, it's not going to come with this pigtail on it. This pigtail comes with your flight controller. So this is for the camera to plug into the flight controller. The one that this comes with is actually for this plug to plug into. So it's there is a bit of micro soldering involved in this build. So if you're not quite comfortable with that yet, I would not go ordering parts just yet for this. Or if you do just get a different camera, um, one that would plug in easily that I'd recommend that would fit with everything would just be the Runcam Nano 3. Big old box of Happy Model 0802 25,000 kV motors. Uh, and lastly, we are going to need one BT 2.0 pigtail. So to get started, we're going to go with the frame kit first. We're going to open that up. And this is from Fractal Engineering. So you get yourself a nice little Fractal Engineering sticker to put on something nice or give to someone you love. There's also in this bag here, you get motor screws as well as flight controller screws. These motor screws are slightly longer than what you would normally see in a whoop because these are meant to go through the carbon frame as well as through the plastic duct that will be there and then into the motor as well. So they're all sized for what you need them for. Next thing out of the box is going to be the Mobula 7 V4 frame by Happy Model. However, I already have a broken V4 frame here where the flight controller posts here broke off and the battery tray looks like it's about to break off. So I'm not gonna be using this one anymore. So instead of hacking the ducts off of this brand new one, I'll save this and I will hack the ducts off of this pre-used one. You're gonna have two TPU strips here, if I can get them out of here. And what these strips are, it's very clever the way that they do this. What these strips are is your camera mount and your battery holder. So this will hold a 300 milliamp normal, you know, kind of stick battery. And on this side you have the 450. So the length is a little bit shorter on the 300s and a little bit longer on the 450. Uh, and then this here in the center is your camera mount. Take a look at the frame here, which is our nice clean cut carbon. It is 1.5 millimeters thick. It's the frame size I prefer. There are two options on the website. I usually go with the 1.5 millimeter. I'll leave my other, I'm not gonna use the 300. I use the, the 450 pack. So we're gonna use the larger of the two TPU pieces you get. So we'll start off right here at the easiest part, which is just gonna be separating these TPU pieces that you need. So we're gonna do the first one, which is your battery mount for the front. And you just snip right there, and then we're gonna move down to the end of our camera mount, which is gonna be right there at the tip where it comes to a point. And that's it. This last back, back piece is for the back battery holder. And there's two tiny little holes in the TPU I actually use one of those holes to route my ELRS antenna through so that it doesn't get caught up while I'm flying. So I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point. So we're gonna set our TPU aside and then we're gonna move over to our carbon and we're gonna need some screws out of here. Now there are two sets of flight controller screws that you're gonna get. You're gonna get four of each kind 
and one is slightly shorter than the other set, which these are gonna be for your two millimeter carbon. And then these four here are gonna be if you're using the 1.5 millimeter carbon. Now, if you start to notice over time that these screws start to slip or you might have one pop out, I've never had this happen, but if it starts to kind of lose its grip on the carbon, I've always thought I'd keep these laying around for just replacing them because if this has a little more bite, it'll go a little deeper into the carbon. These don't exactly go all the way through. The only issue with using these longer screws, I'll say now when you go through, it'll poke through the bottom of the, um, the carbon a little bit. So if you're using it for this center screw uh, in the front or rear of your flight controller, you will scrape up your battery putting it in there. So be very, very careful if you do that. Now we're gonna take our shorter screws here and start working those into the carbon. We wanna make sure it's on a nice flat surface when you're doing this. Don't try to hold it in your hand and do this. You might get the screws crooked. Much easier to keep them straight when it's on a nice flat surface. Now before we do that, we should open up our flight controller here because we need the grommets to put around the screws. That'll help hold the screw still, and also that is gonna be needed to hold your flight controller. So we're gonna grab three of our grommets and let's set the rest of this junk from the flight controller aside and we'll get to that when we get to it. So I like to start off first by putting the rear screw into the carbon. So I just put my grommet around the screw and then uh, using my larger of the two screwdrivers I set aside, I'm gonna get that screw nice and straight on there put a whole lot of pressure on it and slowly start turning it in. So it should be almost flush with the bottom of your, your carbon, a little, a little less than flush. Now we have our back screw in, I'm just going to get the camera mount started. So the way that I do that is I go through the front hole in the front side of the frame. Once I'm there, hold it still, grab your needle nose pliers, as close to the base as you can, and start pulling that through. Don't pull too tight because you'll just pop the whole thing through uh, and it'll come right out. Just get it to that stopper that's at the very end. The next thing I'm going to put in is going to be our front battery holder and that is going to be this little guy here. Count down two empty spots from that and it's going to be the very last spot is going to be where I put my battery holder in the front. So grab it again, same as the camera mount. Don't pull it too hard like I just did there, because then you'll go through all the way. And the last one here is gonna go through the back. With the frame still facing forward, I take the pointer side and start on my left. Work that bad boy through. Readjust to get up here to the top so you don't stretch your TPU out too much there in the center. There we go. So now that that's locked in there, Curl that around, goes in this side. And for 450s, usually I pull it down to the second bumper there. Uh, and that's usually just perfect for holding the 450s. If you want, you can pull it a little more snug than that, but I will warn you it is a little harder to work your battery in there once you do that. So you can cut the excess off of all of these. And normally I would suggest doing that just because it makes the build look prettier. But as far as for function reasons, I've had really, really, really bad crashes where my TPU and the battery like came out of the frame and then trying to work these back in without having the little pointer piece, if you snip this top part off uh, or if you snip the excess off here, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So instead to save the TPU, I, uh, I just leave it on there. Now that should do it for the frame for right now. We're gonna need to put those last two screws in, but first we do have to do some prep work on our flight control. Soldering on our pigtail, we're gonna tin all of our motor pads and we're going to swap our VTX antenna over to the other side. So we'll start with the antenna and then we'll move on from there. It came loose, but I slipped. There we go. So it should come out nice and easy. It shouldn't be a big deal to get it out. We're just gonna swap it around the other direction and then we're just gonna do reverse of what we just did and we're gonna heat up the hole on the other side, slide our VTX antenna back in, give it just that little bit, and that should be good to go. This is a very long pigtail. Normally I would just use this. This was the one I would normally use on the build and it was more than enough. So this is probably way more than enough here, but since I have switched batteries and um, I do switch batteries quite a bit, 
Sometimes I do leave the pigtail a little longer just in case I get a battery that doesn't have a long pigtail on it or doesn't have a pigtail at all. And there's two ways you can put this pigtail on. You don't really need to do it on the top side like I'm gonna do here. Uh, you can actually do it on the bottom side and it can go through the frame, through the carbon. You just have to put the flight controller in first and then flip it over and there'll be access points to, on the diamond at least, to solder this on from the other side. Fun little tip for when you're soldering on your BT 2.0 plug that uh, OG actually told me this tip and he, I believe, said he heard it from Dan Skittles. So uh, the tip is round is ground. So you know the round end of your BT 2.0 is your ground wire. It's just an easy way to remember it. Round is ground. All right, so now that our pigtail's on, we're just gonna run around and tin all of our motor pads, and then we will drop the flight controller into the frame. Now we're just gonna get our flight controller lined up and make sure everything is looking hunky-dory in the frame. And then once we have that lined up where we want it, we will slide our other grommets on here, like so. Now that we're all lined up, we're gonna drive those last two screws in. You'll notice I did tuck the um, pigtail through this back portion of the frame here. We can get our express LRS antenna out of the way, so we'll use our tweezers just so we can be a little precise with this. Not very precise. So using our tweezers, we're gonna wrap that Express LRS antenna around the back and then through that hole in the TPU here. So far, it's been fine sitting in around this back little rubber piece here. Keeps it up off the carbon, keeps it from rubbing into the props, and this keeps it from popping out of there. Seems to be secure. As far as the VTX antenna, I just leave that kind of slightly hovering over the top of the board and crossed over the front there. Once we get all of our ducks on, you'll see it's it's pretty protected underneath them. So now that that is all finished, let's get our soldering station out again. And we're gonna put our carbon in there, make sure that it's snug. I'm gonna show you how to put one of these and one duct together. And like I said, you can assume the other three are gonna be exactly the same. So I'll skip that just to keep this nice and short. We're gonna take our pre-broken Mobula 7 frame here. We're just gonna follow around the outside of the duct and chop everything off that doesn't need to be there so that we're just left with a perfect circle. None of the extra stuff around the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip those off. I'll just show you one clean so you can see what it looks like. Just everything that was around the edges, all this, all this stuff. This can all just get chopped off and thrown away. You don't need it, you just need the duct. And we're gonna take our 0802 25,000 KV Happy Model Motors. I'm gonna take our wire cutters and just snip the motor wire off there. Pinch all three of them together and strip the ends off them like that. Take our flux pen, smack them once or twice. And we can lay them down here and get them tinned. Okay, he's on there. All right, so motor soldered on. What I like to do is while they're still mounted there, just give the motor some even, not too tight twists just to clean the wires up. Now the way that I run my motors is to save some of the spare wire. You can cut them shorter if you'd like, but what I like to do, I always like to save a little extra because you never know. So what I like to do is run my motors underneath the frame this way just like I did with the pigtail. So for the back motors, I go through the frame and then out the side. Same with the front motors, through the frame, out the side, and then they wrap around to the front 
and they screw on this way with the motor wire kind of facing towards the middle of the frame. Now I like to organize my ducts so that they come off of the whoop frame and go back on in a similar fashion. So you don't have to keep them exactly where they were on the frame, but you just wanna keep this little side that's lower facing towards the middle. Let's turn to the side, get our duct on. We're just gonna get it lined up. And what I like to do is get one screw, one motor screw from your fractal bag and run that through the carbon, through the duct, all the way up and then hold it still. So now my, I know that my duct is lined up. I know that it's on the right motor hole. I know that I got that lower piece right there in the middle. And all I have to do is just take my motor, move it over, line up where that motor hole is, and then just keep turning that same screw. Don't tighten it all the way though, all right? Just a little bit. So now that you have it just a little tightened, you got a bit of a hinge, so you can move it and get it lined up where you need it to be. So line up your other two motor holes, get your other two screws in, and then we're gonna go around and do the same thing all the way around. So I'll solder on all three of the other motors, and then we'll flip it over and put all the rest of the ducts back on. So the last thing left to do here is just get our camera plugged in to the board and make sure we have it facing upright. And we're gonna put it through the front of the holder. So it sits just like that. Line it up in between the ducts where we want it. And then I'm gonna use my tweezers here to drop it through the hole that is right in front of where we put the battery holder. We're gonna grab it again, just like we did before with all the other ones with our needle nose pliers. And we're gonna wiggle it, pull it slowly down to the second rung of the holder and then angle your camera where you'd like it. I run mine fairly flat. So I'm gonna leave mine right around that looks about right. So next thing we're gonna do now is go downstairs and we got to get on the computer and do some flashing. I would suggest using Google Chrome and you're gonna to need to open two tabs. You're gonna to wanna to do one at config.bosshobby.com and that'll take you here. You don't need to do the um, pound home and all that. And then the second one you're gonna want is ese-configurator.com. So once you get those two open, start off with the Quicksilver. We're gonna do flash. We're gonna go to reset to bootloader. Now this quad already has Quicksilver on it because I tried flashing and recording and my recorder froze when I hit flash. So this time, hopefully it won't happen. I think we're okay. All right, so moving on, we're gonna do Boss Hobby, leave that right there on Quicksilver. Make sure whenever you watch this video, you're on the newest release. And then you're gonna go to Target, Crazy B, Express LRS F4, Brushless, Flash. Select the STM32 bootloader, and then you wait. All right, so you'll get a little diddy 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 when it's all done. We're gonna connect. Now, once you are connected, you can go to Templates, scroll down here to the Mob Thick, and click apply. Now that that's done, you can go up here and we're just gonna make sure everything got set up correctly. So your gyro should be the right direction now, which it is. All of this should remain the same. Apply that. Okay, auto. We're gonna to go to right channel, strong power level, apply. All right, now we have video in our goggles, so we can turn that off. That's an easy one. Now we're gonna turn our radio on. Welcome to and we're gonna set that to UART1, apply. Now we should be able to go over to our receiver tab. It should say that the status is currently in binding. And if you have that, then all you gotta do is go to your Express LRS Lewis script, go down to bind, bind, click enter, and, and that's the beauty of Express LRS. We're all done. We're bound up there. We're gonna do three times up on the right stick to save. We're going to apply, give a reboot, 
connect back up. Make sure everything is there. We're going to change our switches, put in whatever you need for your switches, whatever you would normally use. Uh, I believe arm is eight for me. So arm and idle up, uh, which is your air mode are both going to be on channel eight. And then I set turtle mode normally, and that is the only other one I'll set. So you can identify your switches over here just by flicking them on and off and looking to see which one changes. So switch five, or channel five, channel five there. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're going to leave the OSD pretty clean. I usually get rid of the majority of this stuff. Uh, gyro temp can go, flight mode can go, eh, it's express LRS, you don't really need that. Stopwatch can stay, system status stays, throttle can go, current can go. And then as far as adjusting these things, you just kind of click around until you get them where you want. Um, up is down, down is up. And uh, right is left and left is right, I believe, or up is left and right is, you'll figure it out. We're going to check our motors, make sure all of our pins are in the right place. Make sure the front left is spinning when the front left is active. Make sure the back left is spinning when the back left is active, so on and so forth. Once you've made sure all your motors are in the right place, if you need to change pins, very simple. It's all right here. Just set the pin to whichever one needs to be spinning uh, and vice versa. Just they're identified there. So really simple, really easy way to set it all up. So now that we're all done in Quicksilver, Quicksilver, you can hop over to the ESE configurator and make sure that all of your motors are spinning the right direction and uh, set up your ESEs that way. You can leave it on BL Heli. That's what will come on the diamond, but um, usually I swap it over to Blue Jay. I'll run you through Blue Jay at least to show you what I do. So um, we're going to go to read settings. Uh, okay, so then we're going to go to flash all ESEs and we're going to go to Blue Jay and we're gonna go to the newest version and set this to 24 and flash. Okay, so now that that's all done, I already know that ESC one, two, and four, three need to be reversed. So I'm gonna swap those three, right settings, and then we can disconnect, connect, We'll double check, make sure all of our motors are spinning the right direction. One is good. Two is good. This is the questionable one. Three is good. And four is good. Okay, so now we can disconnect and we'll give it a rip and see how she flies. I got video, you got video, we got telemetry. Let's a go. Oh boy. There's a fan over here. Got about a little wobbly when we came out of there. But the tune is feeling tight. Feels epic. Oh God, I wanna go outside and fly this now. Oh, yes. Feeling very, very good, boys. Oh! All right. So, let's take it outside and give it a proper ripping.
one last suggestion I might give you after you've gotten this all put together is put a little tiny dab of glue like E6000 or welder's glue or even hot glue. Um, I use blue tack just because I don't like putting glue on stuff if I don't have to. So I use blue tack as just a little ball of blue tack right in the center of the carbon, not on the flight controller. What that does is just helps when you put your battery in, it helps to keep it from sliding too far forward or backward. Normally the TPU bands do the trick for normal acro in normal crashing, but when you get into some heavier crashes or if you hit just the right way, it might slide too far forward or backward and then it'll fly funny and it's a big mess. So to avoid all that, just a little tiny dab of glue, or like I said, what I use blue tack right there in the center of the carbon where all four of the posts meet. So that'll do it for the mob thick. Uh, I want to thank Fractal Engineering for, first off, for being a sponsor and for sending out the frame so that I could do this build and show you guys and share with you. Secondly, I want to thank everybody over at Quicksilver. You guys are amazing. Uh, the dev team is really kicking ass on development and I, I really am sticking with the firmware as far as I'm concerned with whoops. I don't miss anything from Betaflight after switching over to Quicksilver. There's there's no features that I'm like, ah, oh, I really wish I still had this uh, on my, I, I run my Whoop so basic, I didn't need any of that extra fluff. Any questions you may have or comments, please leave them down below. If I missed anything uh, or overlooked anything, I'm sure it's possible. I don't really build these that often because they don't break that often. So um, I may have missed something or glossed over something. It's flying fine, so I'm assuming I didn't miss anything. But um, if something's not working, please just leave a comment and I'll, I'll get you through it. I will leave links to all the parts that I use in this build down below in case you needed any of those. None of those are affiliate links outside of the coupon code you can use at uh, checkout for Fractal Engineering. You get 10% off if you use code Infinity Loops on your order. It also helps the channel out a little bit. And speaking of helping the channel out, you can also find the link to our Patreon down below where once a month we pick one member over there to pick a t-shirt out from our Teespring, any design of your choice, and then we will ship it out to you. So you can also check that out if you're interested. Thank you for watching guys, and we will see you in the next one.